Every day at 6.30 a.m. near One World Trade Center, John starts his more than 10-story climb up to the top of one of the highest construction cranes in America. He does it without a harness or safety rope, more than 60 floors above the street. John's crane is one of two perched on top of three World Trade Center, an 80-story skyscraper that's the last of the major towers to rise above ground zero, 15 years after 9-11. 80 feet above John, fellow engineer Dave Brown is heading up an even higher crane. Once he gets to the top, he'll spend the day at about the same height as the observation deck on the Empire State Building. Every day before he puts this towering machine into motion, John heads up to the crow's nest above the cab to check the crane's steel cables and pulleys. Still unsecured, he's now about 1,000 feet above the street. Some of the best operating engineers won't even work at this height because of the risks. Dave's not one of them. In the crane above John, he's ready to go with his first assignment. He needs to pluck more than 10 tons of steel off of a trailer that's parked hundreds of feet down on the street below. He lowers the crane's massive hook. On the ground, two iron workers, known as connectors, attach the girders to the hook. As soon as it's ready, a signalman on the street gives Dave the okay on the radio to lift away. It takes about five minutes for 25,000 pounds of steel to climb 70 stories. These massive forms will be used to frame out the tower's upper floors. Now, Dave can see what he's lifting with his own eyes as he brings them in to iron workers below. They disconnect the load and free up the crane as fast as they can. When the weather's good, cranes like these have to remain in almost constant motion. They are responsible for lifting almost every tool, machine, and new piece of the building as it grows higher and higher. Building New York City's skyline wouldn't be possible without a carefully choreographed dance of skilled workers and towering machines like these.